In an earlier chapter, we looked at systems of equations where we intersected two lines. We looked at graphing, substitution, and elimination. Now, in theory, you can do that for any two graphs. It doesn't have to be lines. So that's what we're going to look at in this lesson. We're going to look at solving nonlinear systems by graphing. And obviously, then, this means that at least one of them is nonlinear. Now, specifically in this lesson, we're going to talk about parabolas and lines because this chapter is about quadratics. And when you have a system that contains a quadratic and a linear, they can intersect at no points, they can intersect at one point, or they can intersect at two points. So if we remember that solutions is where the intersection points are, there can be one solution, there can be two solutions, or there can be no solution. So we're going to look at how to find those solutions and how to see those solutions using the three techniques, graphing, substitution, and elimination. So we're going to start off the graphing by brushing some cobwebs off of our memories and remembering that in order to graph this quadratic, we're going to use the um, axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a, and that's going to give us negative 5 over 2 times 2, Ugh. which is negative 5 over 4. So the vertex of this table is at negative 1.25. So you don't have to go, it doesn't have to be evenly spaced, but we want 2 above and 2 below. So let's see. So let's be negative 2, negative 3, and then negative 1 and 0. So pause the video, plug these in, and then also, I want you to finish up the quadratic, plot it, and then I also want you to graph the line because that should be a very easy memory to recall. You're going to use slope and intercept. So I hope you haven't forgotten how to graph a line, and I just reminded you about how to graph a parabola. So let's pause now. All right, so here's what I got. I got them intersecting at the point negative 1, negative 4. And the only downfall of not being able to go evenly spaced on the um, table is that you can't use symmetry in the numbers in the y values because when you noticed uh, if I went to plot, I had one down here, but then I didn't have the one on the other side because I wasn't perfectly evenly spaced. But it doesn't matter. We still get the u. We still get the line and um, we still get the intercept, so that's all that really matters. Okay, now let's look at one with substitution, and remember the substitution technique is when you take one equation and you plug it into the other. So what we're going to do is, since this equation equals y, then down here, instead of y, we're going to plug in that expression. So we're going to get x squared plus x minus 1 equals negative 2x plus 3. Now, we've done ones like these before. You just collect all your terms on one side, and then you use whatever technique you want to solve. So I'm going to move everything over to the left. I'll get x squared. Um, then it will be plus 3x minus 4. And the quickest one for me is factoring. So let me see, do I have a pair? Um, yeah, the pair is 4, whoops, uh, it will be plus 4 minus 1. So the values of x are negative 4 and 1. But be careful, that's not the answer. If you recall back in the other question, we had an intercept point, right, an xy value. So what we have to do now is this is telling us we have two crossing points. We've got x equals negative 4, and it's also crossing at an x value of 1. So we have two points of intersection. We now have to find the y values. And the way that you find the y values is you plug it into the original equations. You plug it in whichever one is easier. Obviously, the linear is going to be the easier one because it has less work. So I'm going to plug in negative 4. So it'll be negative 2 times negative 4 plus 3. So one of the intersection points is negative 4, 11. And then the other one... is going to be at um, 
1. So these are the two points of intersection. Remember, you're not finding x values, you're finding intersection points. Let's look at the final method of solving, which is elimination. Now here's the trick with elimination. You always want to make a variable cancel. But the problem is that you actually have three variable terms. You've got a y, then you have an x squared. This one doesn't, but this one has an x squared, and you've got an x. So you say, well, how do I use the elimination take? technique to cancel something if even when I cancel out one variable there will still be two other variable terms left but it's easier than you think because if you make this one negative well really you can make either one negative but uh, if you make that bottom one negative for example and then you go to line it up you see that the y's cancel each other out. So you have 0 equals x squared. Uh, those actually cancel as well. well that's coincidental. Uh, x squared plus 6. And then you can use uh, whatever quadratic solving technique you want. For this one, I'm going to move it over and I'll use square roots. But the trick with the elimination technique is that you just cancel the y's because then it equals zero and you can use a quadratic solving technique. So let's do that. I'm going to move the six over. So I'll get negative six equals x squared. But wait a second, you can't square root a negative number. So this one has no solution, which means that the parabola and the line don't cross. Now examples 4 and 5 are going to be mostly for graphing calculators. I mean, you could graph negative 3 to the x and this parabola um, and kind of estimate where they cross, but it's very tedious and time consuming, which is the same thing. Um, but uh, it's much easier to do it in a graphing calculator. So 4 and 5 will save. Um, and if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you talk to me next.